Welcome to a new episode. So today, we're gonna be making our own snow chains. I've actually got an overnight snow trip planned soon, and by law, you're required to at least carry snow chains with you. No matter if you've got full drive, massive tires, mud terrain, however aggressive they are, it doesn't matter, you're still required to carry snow chains with you. So I haven't been able to find a place that hires snow chains anywhere near me or on the way for this size tire and to buy snow chains worth an absolute mint. So I figured I'll have a crack at making my own. So yeah, enjoy. Remember to smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And let's just get stuck into it. So in Victoria at least, the chains actually need to be a specific pattern to be used in the Alpine area. So the pattern that is required is what they call a diamond pattern. So it's essentially like, a, I'll put a photo up on the screen here, but it's just the chains are like interlinked between each other along the tread. So that's the style that I'll be doing. And then, yeah, I don't think it's gonna be too hard to do. It's more just gonna be a bit of working out for the lengths and everything. It might be a bit tricky. So yeah, see so how we go, but yeah, just uh, start somewhere, I guess. Never really done anything like this before. So yeah, I'll just be having a crack and trial and error. So I'm gonna start with laying out the tread lengths, I think. So I think how I'm gonna start this is just working out the long run first. So where I want the chain to sit on the sidewall and yeah, I'll just work my way around, I guess. And it'll just be a bit of trial and error. So start wrapping around here, take my measurements, see how far I want it to like actually come down and go from there. So not too sure how I'm gonna film this or tackle this, but yeah, we'll have a crack anyway. Right, so I think I've nutted out the chain on the side wall. So now I think it's a tricky bit trying to work out all these chains. So if it was just um, straight or flat chain, I don't know what they call it, I'd just be able to just go from side wall to side wall. But because we're going for that diamond pattern, I actually need to make the chain go up here and then back, and then the opposite one has to do the same thing. So. Yeah, I'm just gonna do a couple and just see how they go really, I reckon. And then hopefully it just works out all the way around because I don't really want to cut all the chain and then work out there too small. So yeah, that's the uh, debacle I'm having at the minute. So this is probably gonna be a massive time lapse of me trying to work all this out. So yeah, enjoy. Righto, so made a bit of disaster here. Took me so many shots just to try and get all this nutted out. Rightio, so this is where I've ended up for tonight. 
I needed two more chain lengths from the 12 that I originally calculated, but that's all good. It, it evens it out a bit more, looks a bit nicer, and um, tightens up the chain a lot more. Uh, so this is what I thought the outside chain length was going to be, so that's how much it took off. So yeah, it was a bit of trial and error, but I think I got there in the end. I've done a test on the chain just to see if I can actually weld it because I'll need to cut one of the links open on each side just to close it back in on itself and then weld it back shut. So at the moment I've just got some um, just some little like mini D shackles just holding it together. So I'll pop all these onto the right lengths that they need to be now that I know and yeah I'll just be cutting the links off and welding them back on. So yeah, the actual shape of it ends up being, I'll have one link where the diamond part joins together on each one. So I've got, I've got a one mocked up here. So that's how the diamond pattern will be. I'll achieve that diamond pattern on this. And then, on the front, I've got one big D shackle, so there'll be one of these on each side. So when I roll it out, that's what will where I'll be closing it up when I'm actually using it. And then I've just got a bit of bungee cord just to pull a bit more tension on it, just so it doesn't actually move around so much. So yeah, that should be the end product after I uh, do probably. I don't know, I reckon it probably take me a day to weld up all those. So yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a big day. I've uh, had a bit of a think last night and I was using these bungee cords to like pull the tension on the chain to keep it tight. And it was just, I wasn't exactly happy with using these things. I can just see them over time, just deteriorating, stuffing up or, you know, probably stuffing up when you're actually using them and they fling off or something, all the chains go flying. So, got rid of those and decided to change up that system for a turnbuckle. So, it lets me really tighten it up and lets me have a little bit more slack so I can actually get the chains over and then I can just pull the rest of the tension just with the turnbuckle and, you know, that's pretty, pretty strong. So. Got a couple of 10 mil stainless steel turnbuckles and now I'm pretty happy with the design and the layout. Everything's even all the way around and like that's pretty tight and this is a brand new tyre. So the tyres on the actual patrol now are obviously a little bit more worn so I'm making sure they're really tight on a brand new tyre and obviously when I get them on the other ones that should be pretty sweet so now I've got the uh, lengthy task of welding all these joins together yeah here we go Righto, so welding's done, finally. If it uh, wasn't obvious, I am not a welder. So yeah, wasn't too bad. So now I'm just going to touch up wherever I've welded because it's obviously ruined the finish of the metal with a bit of uh, just galvanized zinc coating just to uh, cover up wherever the welds have gone. And they've just ruined the, uh, the previous zinc coating so I'll just touch it up with this and then I'm going to make another one for the other side so yep same process I'm hoping it should be a lot quicker for the other one because I've just I'll just copy all the exact same measurements here and then I'll give them a test fit and see how they go so 
Yep, paint these up and get into it. Righto, time to do the proper test fit onto the car. Probably should have done this before I welded it all up, but anyway. So what I've got is just a block just to get the wheel off the ground. So I've put that inside one of the loops in the chain on the ground. So when I reverse back, I can maneuver the chain a little bit as I need. And then I'll pretty much just throw it over. I don't know, we'll see how we go. That's the plan anyway. So I'll just reverse this back and yeah, we'll go from there. Right, whoa, how's the flex? So, just gonna pull this up and over. So what I did actually do, I forgot to mention, I left a bit extra on the sidewall chain, just so if for whatever reason you can't get the full length on there, you've got a little bit of extra chain to get to, and then once you drive, drive rotate it a couple of times, it'll slacken up and then you can get the rest of it. So that's why I've left a little bit extra on there as well. Right, so, once I've got the chain to the closest one that I can get onto the actual shackle here, then this leftover chain, I actually hook onto the um, turnbuckle. So I've got a little twisted um, D shackle here, which stays in the center, which is opposite to the chain. And then I slot the hole through there, tighten that up, back this off as much as I can, and then pull this to the closest one, and then tighten it up. Probably get a shifter in there to get it proper tight, but and I'm pretty happy with that. That's not going nowhere. And obviously this is for the back tires, I'm just showing it on the front, but it would work on the front too. Clears everything under there. Ripper. Righto, job done. So pretty happy how these turned out. And now I've always got a set of chains in the car. Uh, if I'm ever going up the high country as well, I could use those there, or obviously any overnight snow trip or whenever the uh, chains are required. So I don't have to worry about hiring them or trying to find a place that even has them to begin with. So hope you enjoyed that episode and uh, you got a bit, bit out of it. Maybe you try it out yourself. But uh, yeah, remember to smash that like and subscribe button. So we see you on future episodes. Until then, keep having a crack. See you in the next one. Cheers.